All right, we're still reviewing Punch. Yes, I'm taking the story of the Naira rebounding. Um, the, I took the story yesterday about the government, the CBN, giving this order that the net opening position should be the should be less than 20 percent and that has to be done by first of february so a lot of banks were rushing to sell out their um their the dollars they had stock just to be able to fit into that the i don't think everybody was able to do it but the cbn was saying in, in because of the efforts that the bank was had put into selling out it had cost Naira to gain, said that the CBI was accusing banks of stockpiling the dollar and also creating a business around the volatility of the exchange rate. So because the broad exchange, the black markets have seen what is happening, they were also hurrying to sell out their own so that if it crashes below what they bought it for, they will not be losing too much. So in um, Abuja, Naira sold for as low as 1,300. I mean, bought for 300, sold for 1,350. Um, they said that um, in um, other states, Kano, it was 1,004, Lagos, 1,004. And this was compared to Wednesday when it was it closed for 1,005 and above 1,005 in most of the Nigerian states. So we're seeing the way policy can drive down the um, dollar price. And we're looking forward to more policy change. The pro projection is that the actual value they are trying to achieve is 900 to a dollar. So we're hoping they get there and we're going to support them. Okay. Well, still on the dollar mm. issue, they said that um, international flights now have increased their mm. tickets. And, you know, everybody's panicking, especially those people who travel for not just leisure, but, you know, we have people who go for studies, people who go for medical care. And they said the Naira had fallen from approximately 900 dollar to over one thousand four hundred dollar on monday mm. after the fmdq exchange and he said the review came after the central bank had accused uh, foreign exchange dealers of reporting false figures now barely 24 hours after the movement at the official rates international airlines operating in nigeria had to move up their own ticket rates from 900 dollar to 1421 uh, to a dollar in naira and that had taken over 55% increase in international affairs. So they are asking, you know, saying that uh, is there any way they can make, there's something they called it, they can give a window for people to have lower inventory options. That means reducing the rates for some people so that they are able to meet up with their obligations because the ticket now that would be costing, that used to cost $1,000 to probably fly to the UK is now close to $1.5 million. Naira, and a lot of people may not be able to meet up with their obligations. So if there's a way they can open an inventory, a lower inventory for customers, that will also aid to you know, help people understand mm. and um, help people manage their resources. Okay, Lagos State Government, subnational, doing national things. So <clears throat> our governor was in China to finalize plans for the state's real projects and also discuss the, third, the fourth mainland bridge. Uh, the governor was saying that he expressed excitement that the Red Line Rail project covering Agbado to Oto would be unveiled in a few weeks. Um, he was in China. Uh, he said, I'm delighted to announce that the Red Line, yes, I said that we are also supposed to ensure the inauguration of the fourth Milan Bridge. And um, he said that he reiterated the dedication to completing the Blue Line uh, by the second phase should be completed very soon. Uh, this trip was important to meet with the leadership and finalize our plans for the integrated in systems that will work for Lagosians and commit them to long-term partnerships. So this will help millions of Lagosians and residents to move better with the support that the partnership we're having with CCECC of China. Mm. We now quickly now to Daily Sun security operative soup on forex dealers in Abuja. Pipeline exposure kills five oil thieves in Imo. Plato killings, PDP governors call for state police. Man, family... Escape lynching um, has house set ablaze over alleged blasphemy in Casina. Controversy in National Assembly over retirement age. And ECOWAS um, CSOs seek dialogue to prevent regional bodies in disintegration. I have the National Assembly story. So there's a controversial bill moved, uh, the title, a bill for an act to make provisions for the retirement age for staff of National Assembly's service and for related matters sponsored by the Deputy Minority Leader, Liu Madaki. 
and this bill seeks to extend the retirement age and years of service from to 65 years and 40 years for the pensionable um, years of service for legislative um, staff. And this bill, of course, is seen to be most likely to create conflict with, between um, senior staffs uh, of National Assembly, senior directors, clerks, National Assembly clerk of the Senate, clerk of the House of Reps, and other top permanent secretaries who will now be clashing with junior staff who is expecting them to retire so that they can get promoted. Mm. But the, move, the sponsor of the bill says that this he is looking at would create, enhance the efficiency of professionalized National Assembly staff. And the bill, of course, because it tie, is titled Legislative Houses, is um, supposed to mean Houses of Assembly as well. I'm wondering, why do we like it? Well, mm. National Assembly staff, are they not also civil servants? Let the civil service guide these things and we just like that they extend, you know, they have moved it. It has passed second reading. Mm. Okay, another story. Yes, yeah, so we said they said they had about five persons suspected to be all vandals and they've been confirmed dead following an explosion that rocked the Obiti community in Ohaj, a Wema local government area of Imo State. So the incident has been uh, investigated by the Imo State Police Command, and it happened on Tuesday involving pipeline vandals in the area. Now, the Imo State Police uh, Public Relations Officer, PPRO, ASP Henry Okoye, was the one that confirmed the incident, and he said the State Commissioner of Police, Mr. Aboki Dan Juma, had already set up an investigative uh, panel to unravel the immediate cause of the incident, as well as also arrest uh, fleeing culprits. And he mm. said it happened on Tuesday. About five persons lost their lives in the explosion. They were burnt beyond recognition, and um, they are currently investigating it in collaboration with other sister security agencies. Uh, to find out those people behind the economic uh -huh. sabotage. So they said um, they went into Obiti rubber estate in the area with a articulated vehicle and they had to dig up an oil pipeline that was already passing through the area. So probably they've been doing it for a very long time, but just, it just happened that um, the thing blew up. And um, they said they had connected a long pipeline to their tanker and they started pumping before the explosion happen. This is what we are talking about. We know that these things are dangerous, but people, because of greed, will hmm. still go ahead to be digging oil that is not their own. Okay, so the civil society um, have expressed, uh, have condemned also the uh, military rule in, this, in the ECOWAS region. It says the threat of gradual disintegration of a community which had before then served the best practice template in the entire region should not be overlooked. He condemned the they condemned the Niger, Mali, and Burkina Faso's plan to leave ECOWAS, saying that we cannot just stand by and watch them, that we need to take a deep reflection about the collective milestone of the regional integration collectively achieved, including peace missions to member states and the mobility of goods and services across the various borders and the removal of custom duties and staffing. So these are benefits of ECOWAS, and that this must be reviewed before we can just look the other way concerning so I have a story, States. really sad story. Well, it's a sad story, but it did not lead to fatality. In Castina, um, a man and his family escaped being lynched. Their house was set ablaze. Why? Mm. This man allegedly posted something on Facebook that was blasphemous. And so somebody gathered people to go to his house with his family there, Abu Abubakar, Mani Abu Abubakar, and he's with his family in the house, set his house ablaze. He was able to escape. Um, the police mobilized people to the, to the site of the, well, they were able to douse the tension of the people that were around, that were trying to lynch the man. But I still feel like we need to find a long-term solution to this. If blasphemy is against the law in a particular community, then let the law follow its course. And there's somebody that is gathering people. It cannot just be that it's Not random. Against the law. It cannot be random that's they, because it, was, it, it wasn't, this was really, really bad. Um, the police commissioner said he has called on traditional rulers, the state commissioner for religious what affairs, Castina states wow. that they should um, implore them to call their followers to be peaceful. But I think the best solution is to find the person that the, the, the leader that is the rallying voice that gathers people together to carry out this action. These people left their houses to somebody's house around 8, 15 a.m. 
on I mean, January 30th to go and set somebody's house ablaze because he, was, he said a comment on Facebook that was blasphemous. Somebody shared the address. They should investigate this further. Vanguard, um, after Ikiti, more children kidnapped in Benue. Really sad story. Why government should remove subsidy on electricity, says power minister. Hardship, seven months not good enough to fix Nigeria, says federal government. Uh, established state police to fight insecurity, PDP governors tells federal government. Okay, which story are we starting with? So the minister for power, uh, uh, Ms. Uh, Adid Bayo, Adid Labu, has proposed that the president removes completely subsidy for, on electricity. He said that we should pay a full cost reflective um, payment for the electricity, electricity supply. This is because he visited the Oloro Shogo power generating plant in Ogo State and the Omoto Shaw power generating plant in Ondo State. And he says, hmm, we have been to these two power plants. These are big power plants. I am impressed at the size and the technology of power plants here. But I am amazed at the level of underutilization of these power installation. Each of them operates below 25% capacity when, and we are complaining that there's no power generation, there's low power generation in the country. This is under capacity utilization. It's due to a variety of um, reasons and it says um, shortage in gas supply is one of them, which is why I need to see these plants myself. Speaking about turbines to generate more power for the country, he said, what can we do to support this power plant to operate at impressive capacity. What I am saying, we are not talking about the prepaid meters that have not been supplied. Mm -hmm. I don't know if the minister is aware that the old price has changed and that the contractors are also giving issues on already paid for prepaid meters. If you are increasing and saying we should pay a cost-reflective one, will it be fair that you know, they are not also well metered? Because if you leave people on estimated bills ah, and no, do this cost reflective, that. people will pay for what they did not use. Before, and you won't be able to compensate them. Mm. So he needs to take a proper stand. He has not even started his ministry work. He's the minister that I'm least feeling right now. Okay. So I'm waiting for him. So we have a story. This act, actress, Uluwa Darasimi, uh, has been sentenced to eight, eight, six months in prison for spraying money spraying money and stepping on the money. So she attended the party. The party <laughs> took place in January 2023, and there were videos on social media yeah, of her so spraying mm. 100 naira, 20 naira, and the stepping on its part. They were, at first, she claimed not guilty when she was arrested in February 13, 2023, by ICPC, later handed over to EFCC. Later, she changed it because the video, they were Was video. it deliberate stepping on? Yes. Oh, no way there's money on the floor. No, just they were, if, apparently, but she's... And what's the money? Don't step on it now. Don't step on don't money. Step on money. Don't, don't step on money. on money. So, and if you see video, don't post because I don't know who posted this video. She has plenty people she should hold. Uh, no, anyway, just, they gave her option. She might not spend. Really yeah, she might not spend um, three the six months in prison if she's fine? able to pay three hundred thousand naira uh, okay. fine to the consolidated oh. revenue account of the federation. Hello. Pray in a decent way. Don't step on our naira. You have to respect. No, but when people are dancing, what I'm saying is, let's be. There's always somebody realistic. You have somebody around you to pick it up. Don't just stand and. Yeah, there, there, there's a modus operandi for everything. Mm. You stand, there gotta be so people around you. So maybe we should copy Kwan one. Uh, when K one is on stage, there's, there's, a, there's a tree. There's a tree. Mm. You see a guy just yeah, yeah. money so should not be flying. Ways. Ways. Okay. Just different ways. Just different ways. Gotta go walk around. Be classy thing. about it. Classy about it. Just our Lagos people. We be shooting. We be shooting. Money. Yeah, that's that's disrespectful. And they'll be throwing money. Yeah, come on. Not our money. Even if naira is one thousand something, there's no need to treat it like that. You know. We'll be right back.